hello everyone it's Carrie back again with you to share another Halloween card this time I'm going to create an Alice in Halloween Town card and I'm going to be pulling in a bunch of different sets this is the Halloween sentiment set and I love this set it's one of my all-time favorites for Halloween lots of good sentiments and then I've got Wonderland Wisdom here and the wonky checkers stencil of course, I'll be bringing in Alice and the Mad Hatter, and we're gonna go ahead and create this card by adding some Halloween elements. And there's three different ways you can do this. You can use any images you have, and by using this formula, you can turn any card really into a Halloween card. The first thing you wanna do is to bring in some Halloween colors. I'm gonna start by bringing in some purple, which I love for Halloween. And I've looked at a lot of the Halloween cards I've made so far, and purple seems to be a dominant color. I just love this dark shade of purple for this card. So I started with lavender cardstock, and then I inked on some dark purple ink with that wonky checkers stencil. Now I'm gonna go ahead and stamp out my sentiments. I have chosen the trick or treat sentiment, and this is another way you can bring in Halloween to any regular images. So from the Halloween sentiments, I've chosen this beautiful trick or treat. I love the font of it. I love the look of it. And then from Wonderland Wisdom, I've brought in what a strange world we live in. Because truly, trick or treating, if you think about it, is kind of strange. <laughs> I'm pretty sure Alice thinks so anyway, or the Mad Hatter. I will use some Versified Onyx Black so that I can heat emboss that with some clear embossing powder. This is going to protect our sentiment from getting smeared because we are gonna do a little bit of inking over this panel as well. So that's a good protector. And now I'm going to go ahead and stamp the images. I've got the Mad Hatter here holding some tea. And then I'm also going to do a mask for him, which is what I really like to do when I'm inking anything in the background. So I'll take my masking magic and just put that over the top and stamp that same image. And then I can cut that out, but first I'm gonna go ahead and stamp Alice. Now I stamped these separately because I wanted them to be closer together than I could get them by stamping them at the same time. So they are a little closer than if I lined them up and stamped them together. Now I will cut this out using a scallop die. This is from the EIEIO frame die. I love this die. You can also use the inner piece that's just down from that to create a border. There's lots of different things you can do. Today I'm just using the scallop edge and now I'll go ahead and put those masks right over the images we just stamped. So I'll remove that backer right like that. And then I'm just gonna go ahead and use my tweezers to get that position down. But then I realized I forgot to cut out this part right here. <laughs> so I'm gonna go ahead and cut that and then add the mask to the Mad Hatter. And then I'll go ahead and add Alice's mask to Alice. And this is gonna protect our images while we do a little bit of inking on the background. Now, if you have a little trouble removing that backer, I like to use my tweezers sometimes to get right in there and then it's easy enough. So I'll put that down just like so. And now it's time to add that wonky checker stencil over the top of this. For this, I'm gonna use a lighter purple color. So I've got my milled lavender here and I just want kind of a light hint of the wonky checkers back there. So I've got my paper that I'm kind of dabbing off that ink before I bring it to my panel. And this is just, like I say, a whisper of that checker. But it looks really nice. And then we can go ahead and start our coloring. Now again, for the coloring, I'm bringing in some Halloween colors. Greens are another one of my favorite colors for, for Halloween. And I love this lighter green. You can use some lime greens if you want, which is kind of another Halloween favorite. I'm starting with some light greens though for Alice's dress. I always try to challenge myself to color up Alice a little bit differently every time. You could of course use the traditional blues, but today Alice is in costume. 
She's got her green Halloween dress and she's going to have a wig on today. <laughs> so you'll notice when I get to that portion, she's not going to have the traditional blonde colored hair that she normally does. No, no. She's got her, her wig on. So I'll finish up this green coloring. I have the colors up on the screen. It's G40, G43, and BG90. And today I'm going to give her some navy blue shoes by bringing in that darker shade of blue. I will use that same shade on the Mad Hatter's hat. I really love this color combination for his hat today. It's a fun one. This is B37. You'll notice I removed both sides of the marker caps. That's so that I equalize out that ink inside the marker. That one tends to want to give me a big splotch on my paper. And so I found if I remove both of those caps, then I'm not going to get the big splotches. And I would hate that since I've already done all this work on this panel. So you'll see I'm bringing in some lighter shades of blue to, to blend that through. And I'm going to use the blues on his pants as well. So I'll give him some blue stripes and then I'll add some green in for the Mad Hatter as well. So he's going to have a green vest and some green stripes on his pants. Now I'm going to skip through some of this coloring because I did take a little bit of time to do this coloring today. I gave him also a light gray jacket and now for his hair he's going to have darker hair today. Now I start with a darker gray with the N7 and then I'm going to bring in the N3 or 5. It's the N3 today which is interesting but I jumped down to the N3 and colored up the ends of his hair and that way we get kind of a, a fade in his hair and then I'm going to use the same colors for Alice. You'll also notice I brought some purple in for his sash and his tie. That purple will help tie in the background when we put this card all together. So here's Alice with her wig on. I'm imagining it's like a witch's wig or Elvira or something like that. Again, just blending that through. One of the lovely things about these images is that they are quite small, so you don't have to do a lot of blending if you don't want to. You don't have to add the shading like I am doing. Sometimes I'll use just two colors, whereas I normally will use three or four. And then here we go. We're going to put all this together. And the last thing to do to bring this more into Halloween Town is to add some more Halloween elements to the card. So I looked through my Miss Ink stamps and I found a jack-o'-lantern, a little snail that has a mask on his face. He's so super cute and a little trick or treat pumpkin. So I'm going to add those things with some foam tape to pop them up, give this card a little fun dimension and add that more Halloween vibe. So there's a look at all of the things we have so far, but to finish it off, of course, I needed to add one more little thing, and that is some gems. So I'm bringing in some gems in a light green shade to match the dress on Alice, and then I'll bring in some stickles to make her apron sparkly. I added it to the eyes and the mouths of all the jack-o'-lanterns for all of those Halloween elements, and that'll give it a little sparkle and make them glow. So there's a look at our card for Alice and the Mad Hatter in Halloween Town. I love how this turned out. It's a pretty simple design and very easy to replicate. So I hope you enjoyed it today. Don't forget there's a brand new Alice release coming out and all of these older Alice sets will also have dies to go along with them. I am so excited. Now I didn't have them at the time of filming this video, but I will be back next week to share a lot of the new goodies with you. So stay tuned. We'll see you then. Bye-bye.